started. But they still go down to the two lanes. Yeah, they keep one in yeah. each direction, so it's it, it slows things down a little bit in the af late afternoon. Yeah, and the it eight usually does. Sure is yeah, but uh, eight, we'll see as it progresses. Yeah, and but one more thing, I know you inherited this, and it, it was there for a long time, but um, and I haven't been downtown Bond Road. I. I I think it's great that you were able to get rid of a lot of stuff. But at town meeting, I did think that resident had, you know, kind of a legitimate gripe when he said that, you know, for him, it's embarrassing when they're going to the Little League fields and the softball field are actually, is it softball? softball. Or soft, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of DPW things all along that road. And I just wondered if, have has that been cleaned up i mean we well, they kind of really sprawled out in terms of you know can we like kind of contain it a little bit more because that road is well i think he was talking more down towards where they parked because it used to be a about seven thousand yards of wood chips right which we remember removed. that we got that all out of there oh you did and we had some piles there over the winter because uh, last fall because they weren't playing so we kind of used the area a little bit while they were Okay. weren't playing because everything was shut down for COVID, but yeah. we've since moved everything out of there. Oh, you did? So they have that whole area to park. Okay, what about a, okay? What about the old plows and stuff that used to be there that kind of... We've gotten rid of a you got lot rid of, of it stuff. All. Yeah. Okay, Anything nice. that we're not using, we've, we've gotten rid of. You did, okay. Yeah, so it's, it's much, much more cleaned up. Okay. We can consolidate maybe some of the structures on both sides of the road, but uh, for the most part, down where they are, it's wide open now, so they have much more parking. Okay, that's so. good. Okay. Anything else from... Anyone? Okay, thanks much. Okay. Okay, next we have water and sewer shame. Okay, good evening. Good evening, how you doing? Good. Um, we have the operation reports for both April and May. Um, the last time I was before you, I told you I would give you an update on septage revenue and that's in the May report, and I'll um, take any questions you might have on that. Okay, anybody have any questions? Shane, I just noticed on the May report, on page 65, when you give the uh, wastewater treatment facility data, um, it says April, it should be May. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was a typo on my part. Because yeah. it's the same numbers as the April report. Yeah, I'll update that and resubmit. I'm sorry, what page again? Uh, 65. Well, you don't have that one. It's, uh, this is the May report. Yeah. Looks like these numbers are the same as April. Right, because that's yeah, let me I'll look at it and resubmit if there's yeah, a mistake. Good. But the um the flows are up like we we anticipated. So, you know, with the businesses opening and the park opening and some of that's due to flushing too, but I'll go back and revisit those okay. numbers for you. This April flow data reflects a three point five. Uh, okay, flush. so on the wastewater side, yeah. It's on the wastewater side. I'll I'll fix that and resubmit. Yeah, okay. All right. <clears throat> Um, the new pump station is done. Um, bacteria tests have been passed. The VOC testing is done. The engineers sent the stuff that they need to send to DEP today. The DEP did their inspection last week. I'm hoping to have the okay tomorrow to turn that on, um, and we'll activate that tomorrow. We'll run it for a couple of weeks, and then we'll deactivate the other one. So that project will be wrapping up soon. Um, the last time I was here, you asked me to get a update on well one cleanup when they thought that was going to finish i asked last week they anticipate that being done in the next couple of weeks so um they re as far as i know most of it has been removed treated and um, they're getting ready to backfill it soon so that's good news um and then it's just business as usual at the plants both all the plants are running well the hammond brook study still going on um, when mcclure engineering so we can hopefully get that um, stream limit removed. But I have a feeling that we'll have to do another year of um, this study, which will probably cost another $15,000. But if you can get the limit removed and you can run the well all summer long, 
that's, that's advantageous for the town. Um, water ban, probably be back in that by the end of the week, um, unless we get some rain, and then we'll put the signs up. And that's pretty much all I have for you this evening. Okay, Shane, on the uh, monies generated from the septage, is that about average? Yeah, I think, um, and that's, that's for the first five months. I think last year when it was all said and done, $20,000 went back to the fund after paying for sludge hauling. So we're pretty much on target. Else, I, I'm going to follow up with that because that was my question too. I know we increased our um, the cost Correct. for taking in, and I, I think it was everybody agreed, but I think it was former select person uh, Mike uh, Supernaz urging. It was. Did we end up losing anybody as a result of that? No, because the other towns all went up at the same right. time. Right, I was just wasn't sure, but so the, everybody. So no, we're, it's we're still the same. Was, yeah. So we're still. ahead of the game by increasing. Exactly. All right. And I just want to give you a shout out. I, I don't think anyone's done it in a while, but for people watching, I think your safety is pretty amazing because it says um, no lost time accidents during the month and our staff has worked 32 years and five months with one lost time accident. So I just yeah. wanted to say that that's yeah, no, thank extremely you. Um, good, 32 years. We have training very, every month and it's um, something we preach every day. You know, yeah. you know, you'll see my guys most of the time they have hot hats, glasses on, gloves. And if they don't, they, they hear about it. So um, that's really important to us. And thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, we'd certainly notice if it, we had safety problems. So I just wanted to point out that it, it doesn't go unnoticed. You know, that's appreciated. Thank you. OK, so nothing else for us, Shane? Nothing else. Anything else from the board? OK, okay thank, thank you. you. Thank you. OK, next we have town administrators. Report. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. My report's in your packet. Um, if you have any questions on those items, please let me know. Uh, also on the podium this evening is a memo with some additional agenda items that I apologize for walking in this evening, but uh, they're timely. If you can consider those later in the evening. Um, if you have any questions on my report, please let me know. Okay, is there any questions or comments on this report? I just have a point. I guess I, have, I was going to bring it up onto old business, but since it's it's an item, I'll bring it up here. It says telephone pole banners for OSB. I think that's great that we're going to be putting banners. And I know you had said, you know, do can we work with um, OSB for their 75th, do something mm -hmm. combined? And then we had suggested maybe Terry could come with a few ideas. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, is he is he working on that? Have we met with? Uh, oh yeah, we've Don been in communication with uh, Chris Thierry, who's their marketing person at OSB. So we're working on that. Okay, and going to come forward to the board because at some point, yeah. Okay, because it'd be good to have something oh. by the fall, right? It's this year that's 75 years. Yes, and so we're kind of working on their time frame. Okay. OSB's time frame. Okay. Anyone else? No, I don't think so. Okay, Jeff. All right, thank okay, you. Now we have several action items. The first is consideration and possible action on the confirmation of the appointment for Sergeant Larry Bateman to the position of Lieutenant with the Sturbridge Police Department. Chief? Good evening. Before Good evening. I bring Sergeant Bateman on, I just wanted to thank the town administrator and the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee for supporting the, the second lieutenant's position. If it wasn't for your support, we wouldn't be making these promotions tonight. So. Thank you for that, and I'll bring Sergeant Bateman up. Uh, Sergeant Bateman's been a member of the Sturridge Police Department now for 17 years, serving as Sergeant for the last uh, six. And right here, so you're on camera? Six <laughs> years. Smile. Uh, I, I didn't know we were going to get one. Valued employee. He currently has his bachelor's degree in public administration, and he's in, in school right now, obtaining his master's degree. And back in March, we had an outside company come in. Uh, public safety consultants llc and they they did an assessment center for the sergeants and the lieutenants it was a very um, uh, extensive process and as a result i bring to you tonight um sergeant bateman requesting that he be promoted to lieutenant and he will be assigned as the operations commander of the police department okay any questions from the board someone want to make a motion then uh, sure, I'll make a motion. Uh, I would uh, move Madam Chair to appoint uh, Sergeant Larry Bateman to the position of Lieutenant with the Sturbridge Police Department. Is there a second? I'll second it. 
Discussion? All in favor? Okay, well yes. deserved. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Lieutenant Bateman is going to be um, pinned by his daughter, Melanie, with his new lieutenant's badge. No one's taking a picture of this? <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, oh, you are. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Congratulations. The next uh, person I'm bringing in front of you is uh, Officer David Forty. He too is a 17 year member of the police department. Um, he's, he's been working in patrol the whole time. He's a very uh, experienced police officer. He's served in different capaci capacities. He's a motor officer, a SWAT, SWAT team member for the Central Mass Law Enforcement Council. He currently has his associate's degree in criminal justice and he is going back to school in the fall to obtain his bachelor's degree as well. And I'm bringing him forward, recommending that he be appointed to uh, patrol supervisor sergeant this evening at a um, hourly rate of 3502 per hour. Okay, questions from the board? Somebody wanna make a motion then? I'll make a motion to confirm the appointment of Officer David Fortier to the position of Sergeant with the Sturridge Police Department, effective June 22nd, 2021, with a wage of 3502 per hour. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. audience <laughs> <laughs> still a big audience yeah better we're getting rated <laughs> <laughs> relaxing okay next on the agenda we have um close out of the earth removal permits for the hamilton rod and gun club jeff you want to address this please? yes thank you madam chair hamilton rod and gun club received an earth removal permit back in 2008 i believe and it has been amended and processed uh, since then. Most recently, there was an amendment to the special permit in 2016. Uh, they went through a process with the Conservation Commission uh, to clean up some of the areas. And based upon uh, that and the closeout and their own engineer in the gun club uh, review of the, of the uh, work, uh, we're recommending close out of the earth, per earth removal permit. And there's various communications and documentation that support that, mm -hmm. that recommendation. Okay, did anyone from Hamilton Gun, Gun Club want to say anything? Or are you basically here for the one day? I sent a letter. Yeah, okay, thank you. Some, anyone on the board have a question or comment? Okay, somebody want to make a motion? I'll, uh, I'll make the motion to approve the closeout of the special permits for earth removal for the Hamilton Run Gun Club. A second? I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? Okay. okay next we have consideration on a special one day liquor license for Hamilton Run and Gun Club. And someone would like to speak, I know. Uh, so, so we Come on up and get your microphone there. We actually put in three one-day permit applications for three different events. Yeah. Yep. Um, Milltown is the first one, which is the car show, which we've had probably for a good 10 years, except for last year, naturally. Um, so they're back, and, and we just wanted to move forward with that. And I think it's been signed off already by the police chief, right. as I talked to him the other day. All three are on the request for this evening. Right. Yeah, the first one is for the for the car show, show. correct august 6th and 7th 2 p.m to 1 a.m yeah it runs from friday to saturday night it closes at midnight on saturday and and of course both nights it closes at midnight but um, yeah it runs both days 
And then we have the 100th anniversary I, this year. I don't know if that's on there. Oh, and I think your he hours. Gave, he gave me the letter that I was going to read under correspondence. Okay. Your hours, I think, should read 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. Saturday. Yep, oh, it's not correct. ending at 1 in the afternoon, right? Correct. It's, it's a.m. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, hold on. Is it still considered a one-day permit if we're having a two-day event? It's, it's event? a two-day. you got two, permit two separate permits. Days. Yep. Yes, yes, sure. Two separate yep. permits. And you're allowed yeah. up to uh, 30 one-day permits per year. No one's ever. No one's ever get 30. <laughs> I mean, you may as well have a full license. <laughs> that many. I mean, you do on your club in your pavilion. This is outside. Yeah, we I mean, uh, and I'm not sure if someone at the club brought up that we originally had, a, uh, our license did allow us to do outdoor previously, and I don't know if that's true or not. Um, so that would be something we could discuss in the future if we could make our club license including yeah, we, grounds, right? Yeah, and then we, we wouldn't we have to come uh, in all the, read every it time. When uh, applications are due at the end, end of When we renew? Okay, yeah. perfect. Change of premises, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. adjust it for the beginning of the year. Yeah, we can do that at the end of the year. That was my thought process, so that yeah. we wouldn't have to come back. Okay, for the so few events. Let's take these one at a time. Okay. okay. Who wants to make a motion on the car show? We'll August make it. Sixth and seventh. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the one day liquor license application for the car show on uh, August 6, 2021, and August 7, 2021. Okay, is there a second? Yeah, I'll second it. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, 501. Okay, the next one is the 100th anniversary. The 100th anniversary on, <clears throat> excuse me, September 18th, 3 p.m. to 12 a.m. Any questions on that one? Congratulations on 100 years. Hey, I've only been there eight. So. <laughs> <laughs> You've only been there eight? <laughs> yeah. I thought you said, no, never mind. The clothes be there 100, but I've only been there 8. <laughs> I don't look that old, do I? <laughs> do you guys have anything special planned for the 100th? Yeah, we're going to, um, we, we're inviting all of the members, yeah. which is, what, 7650, Kevin? Wow. And, wow. And, and so it's a big event for the, for the club members and their families at no cost. Um, we're going to invite some dignitaries. I'm not sure who and, who and how yet, but the letters will go out shortly and, and they come and speak and cool. do what we need to do. Yeah, Kevin, would you like me to read this one now? Sure. Okay, this is to the Sturbridge Board of Selectmen. Hamilton Rod and Gun Club is celebrating our 100th birthday on Saturday, September 18th, 2021. We would like to extend an invitation to any and all members of your board and their guests that would like to attend our celebration. Festivities will begin at 3 p.m. with a steak dinner being served between 6.30 to 7.30. Please RSVP to Kevin Susi. Is that how you say your last name, Kevin? Yes, Susie. At racing69 at AOL.com. Thank you, everyone, and looking forward to seeing you. Okay, so does somebody want to make a motion then on the 100th anniversary? One day liquor license? We're good, Chase. You did it so well last night. <laughs> and make it, I was trying to make it easy for Alex if the same person just keeps doing it. I'll make a motion to approve the one day liquor license application for the 100th anniversary on 918 2021 from 3 p.m. to 12 a.m. And I will second it, Madam Chair. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? And again, 401. Okay, the next one is for the Food Truck Festival, October 9th. Any questions from the board? Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, someone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the one day liquor license application for the food truck festival on 10 9 21. From 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. From 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. <laughs> That's why we're all here. <laughs> That's it. That's the team. Is there a second? I will second. Discussion? All in favor? How many trucks are you going to have? Do you know? Kevin, do you have any idea yet? I think I don't have any trucks as yet. That's a good event, too. Yeah. People like food trucks. 
Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. supposedly. Um, it's, you know, the, the food, there's a gentleman that organizes it that gets all the food trucks there. So we're essentially hosting him, but he's bringing in all the trucks. We haven't got a final count yet, but it does sound like it's going to be a good number. Mm. And then hopefully, hopefully people show up and, and roam through the property. Well, I'm sure people will. <laughs> Okay, that vote was four zero one. 1 Okay, you're all you. set. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Oh, gosh. That's awesome. Uh, oh, that goes. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to look like we're getting bribes. <laughs> We have consideration and action on the purchase of a supervisory control and data acquisition system for the fiscal water pump station. Butch or Shane or something in the water. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, what it, this is basically the computer that runs the the um, system up there and it reports. Up where? Up on Fisk Hill, the new okay. booster station. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and whenever there's an alarm condition or a power failure, it notifies the main computer and then that calls the person on call. Basically what happened was we asked the engineer to carry $15,000 to cover this and they didn't. And that work's been done, so now we need to pay the bill. Any questions from the board? Can I just add, Which? we still have, with everything paid, the whole project, we still have over $60,000. Oh, good. <coughs> we don't have to go to FinCom for this? We can just no, authorize it. Yeah. It's in the capital budget. Oh, it's in the capital budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, somebody want to make a motion then? I'll make the motion to authorize the purchase of the SCADA system for Fisco water pump station for a cost of $14,695. Is there a second? I'll second it. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, thank you. Good night. Thank you. Yeah, have a good night. Okay, now we have a consideration on the authorization for the chain of assignment department of environmental protection 319 non point source pollution grant program application for Allen treatment for Guapum Quasit Pond, also known as South Pond. Okay, it's easier to say for me. Yes, yeah, South Pond. This is Mr. Nielsen. He's representing. Hi, how are you? Carl okay. Nielsen. Not, not to be picky, sir, but would you mind removing your cap? Oh, I'm going to look like. I, just, <laughs> I went whitewater hey, rafting earlier today, look, and I had to come straight better. from there to here. Doesn't so. look any better up here, but I'm an old fashioned girl. <laughs> okay, you want to explain? So, we uh, filed, you might remember doing this paperwork last year. We. We filed and were unsuccessful in receiving the grant. We got some feedback from the state regarding things that we could do to improve our chances. Um, and we've taken that into consideration as we pulled this grant together. But essentially, it's the same set of paperwork. And it's um, money that was previously committed to. Right, and it's still available. And so that's all uh, the state just suggested. We submit it again and try again and see if we can do better. So. Here we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, and Brookfield didn't appropriate any money? This year, that was one of the things that improved. Uh, Brookfield and East Brookfield both put in money, so the number or the total value of the, the grant application has increased um, because we have more matching funds, plus we have more money from the state as a result of that increase. So it'll be an overall better project, to be honest. and. Um, if we get the money, obviously, if we can get the grant, it'll it'll be very it'll be I didn't, I didn't a nice see where solution. One of them put money in. Pardon? I didn't see where one of them put money in. Um, they both have. I have letters of commitment from Brookfield, East Brookfield, uh, the Frank a Day Y Camp, mm -hmm. as well as QQLA themselves. Okay. So that's good. Yeah, okay. uh, I forget which Brookfield put in 25, I believe, East Brookfield 15, um, Frank a day was 5,000, and QQLA, I think, is committing 40,000. Now, this says so, did the town of Brookfield this year provide matching, but organizations 
It says, appears from the grant documents that Brookfield has not provided matching funds, but organizations have. He's, he's but you're correct, but it's different. Oh, okay. We're redoing this is it. wrong. Okay. That was, yeah, that this was before. Last okay. times. Okay. Now, the fact that we have two other towns, does that, firing the money, does that increase it, the chances of getting a grant? It certainly does. Because more yeah. towns are committed to it? Yep. That would be it good. It certainly helps. And, you know, it, I won't say it's political, but there is politics involved in that, you know, if there's three towns asking for money from the state, it has a little more weight than if just one town were, were seeking that funding. Okay. Any other questions, comments from the board? I just have one. Mary? Is the phosphorus getting worse, or is it stayed it about the same? It, it's getting incrementally worse every year. So yeah. the sooner we can get something done in the lake, the, the better. It, this, this whole problem is a result of internal phosphorus recycling, so the sediment is full of phosphorus and that gets circulated up every year and the alum treatment stops that process right. so you know that's the beauty of the the, the treatment um, right but incrementally every year more phosphorus comes in creates algae and that settles down to the sediment in the fall when the algae die um, so it gets incrementally worse every year so we're hoping to put an end to that and and this treatment will last 15 to 20 years, so it'll be a, a good uh, good effect. Oh, no, that's good. Now, is phosphorus, to swim where there's a lot of phosphorus, is that like a health It's not health harmful risk? to you. It just, if there's too much phosphorus, you get algae blooms, and the algae blooms can be harmful to you. Um, they become toxic if they get too thick. That's not a problem here at the lake, and that's one of the pitches, I guess, on our grant is to try to stop that process from happening and getting to the point where the lake's being shut down. Right. Like if you hear on the radio, Indian Bacteria, Lake gets right. shut down all summer long because of algae blooms that basically they, they stop people from being able to go to the lake because it's toxic. Mm -hmm. And so if, if you treat the lake now before it gets to that position, you know, you're right. actually s keeping the lake nice, which is what we want to do. And the state, you know, obviously has to go after, if, if lakes are already being shut down, they sort of rank a little higher in priority than lakes that are still clean, but they recognize the value of stopping a good lake from becoming a bad lake, I guess. And so that's where we are now. Mm -hmm. just, we, oh, don't so want, we don't want it to get to the point where it's shutting down Oh no! Not all summer not. long because of algae blooms. It's much better to be proactive and take care of the problem now. Do they just check once at the beginning of the season, or do they check a, a few times during the course of the summer? QQLA? Yeah. Yeah, they, they check, um, they monitor it once a year themselves, and then this, the town of Sturbridge actually sends people out to monitor it, and I'm not sure of the frequency. I know it's at least once per year. And so is that through our Board of Health? That would uh, be I done? think it's or the water. Conservation Commission. Okay. I'm not it's sure who, what board. Okay. Um, I was just curious about it. I, I look but at they it do myself. it they do it as well on all the lakes in Sturbridge. No, I know we've been fortunate our lakes have stayed open, but yep. yeah. But this lake hasn't it, it's not in it, it's not being threatened to the point where it's gonna shut down. Right. Um, it's a safe, nice lake to swim in. <laughs> we just wanna keep it that way. Yeah, of course. Okay, someone wanna make a motion? I'll make a motion to authorize the submission of the Department of Environmental Protection 319 grant for the alum treatment on South Pond. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion? All in five. Favor, sorry. Zero <laughs> five. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, you have paperwork for the final draft when we have it, and then we need a letter of support, which we'll get to you. Okay. All so right. get, send it to you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll do that. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, have a good night. Thanks, you too. Okay. okay, next we have consideration for use of funds from the Wetland Protection Fund for the Conservation Department. Um, we have done this previously. We got a letter from Rebecca on behalf of the Sturbridge Conservation Commission. I would like to request the appropriation of funds from the Wetland Protection Fund Chapter 40, Paragraph 218 of the Acts of 1997, amending 
General Law, Chapter 131, Paragraph 40, in the amount of $5,544 for the purpose of funding a portion of the salary of the Conservation Department's administrative assistant position for the fiscal year 2022. At the June 15, 15 2020, Sturbridge Conservation Commission meeting, the board voted 5 to 0 to approve the use of $5,544 from the fund. Per Mass General Law, the Board of Selectmen are required to additionally approve the use of these funds. Wetland protection funds are permitted for uses related to the administration of the Wetland Protection Act. We respectfully request the Board's continued support by approving the continued use of these funds in the amount of $5,544 for fiscal year 22. Anybody have any questions? Someone want to make a motion? I'll make the motion to authorize $5,544 in the Wetland Protection Fund for the Conservation Department for fiscal year 2022. Okay, is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Three, five, zero. Okay. Next, we have consideration on a dock permit for 285 Clock Road Extension. We have a sketch of the dock and a memorandum from Rebecca Gendro. Anyone have any question on it? The property owner share this evening, answer any questions. Good evening. Hi. Um, I'm John Mastriani. We've had, a, we've had this dock on a beach right since, well, 47 years that we've owned our cottage and uh it's been there over 50 years we never realized that a permit was necessary no most people don't no so so we're here to request a request a permit okay anyone have a question how was it brought to your attention that you needed it just out of curiosity it was just uh somebody in the neighborhood you let you know okay yeah yeah okay. any other Okay, someone want to make a motion then to approve the existing dock? I'll make the motion to approve the existing dock at 285 Clark Road Extension. Is there a second? No second. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a drawing. It, it got the job done. <laughs> 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 That's right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Engineering. Yeah. Exactly. Enjoy oh, your okay. summer. Yeah. Okay, next we have consideration and possible action for the transient and license for Collins Gift. Would you like to come down and explain it, please? Good evening. Hi, I'm Wendy. Um, basically, for at least the last 10 years, I've been promoting dog and bear shows down at the Sturbridge Toast Hotel. So I think it's started out with one a year, moved up to two a year, and we're also going to do an artisan show there this year. Now, are you the only show there at this particular time? Yes. Okay. Because I do know there's one big event that somebody usually applies for a vendor license for everybody. But That's what I do. Okay. Any questions from the board? Is this the first time that you're applying for the transit? Or do no, every year. Oh, every I, year. I knew, but I didn't know if you were the same situation as the people that just left that you didn't know that no, you I come and get a transit. No, I fill out the permit, show my promoter's license, yep. pay for the ten dollars for each of the vendors and then get my sign permit mm -hmm. and have for about ten years. Okay. Anything else on the board? Someone want to make a motion then? I'll make a motion to approve Collins Gift Transit vendor application. Mm -hmm. I'll second the motion. Discussion? All in favor? OK, 
Okay, all set. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a Thank you. good luck with that. Good luck Thanks. with your event. Thank you. Okay, so I think, what is it, 39 vendors? Okay, next we have the consideration on Hawker and head license for Dennis Walsh. But he's online. Oh. Hello, hello there. I am. Okay. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, we wanted to join you tonight in case you have any questions. This is our ninth year. When is the stand going to open? <laughs> <laughs> We're just waiting on the sweet corn. If I had to say tonight, it will either be Friday the uh, 2nd of July or Saturday the 3rd of July. Okay, sounds good. Hadley corn, right? Yes. Okay, any questions from the board? Someone want to make a motion then? Yes, I will move to approve the application of Dennis Walsh for a hawker and peddler license. I'll second the motion. Um, you should put in at the uh, location Empire Village parking lot, Route 20. At the Empire Village parking lot at Route 20. <laughs> <laughs> it is the best corn I've had, I have to say. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I will still second. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? Um, I have. I had one. I did have one question. Um, will you drop this in the mail for us, or should I go over and pick it up at town hall? <laughs> we'll, we'll drop it in the mail. Okay, that's terrific. Hope to see you all this summer. <laughs> Thank you, and Thank you. have a good season. Next. Wait, we have to vote. Oh, on we didn't vote. vote. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's. <laughs> ah, it's only 7 3. <laughs> okay, all those in favor? 5 to nothing. Okay, next we have a um, request for a. Did you guys have a follow up question? Yeah. yeah. Our, our residence is 285 uh, Clyde Road Extension. Our, our dock is on our beach right, which is 288. And a half. Yeah. So was that a I, I just, you know, when we were going out, it was. Well, we can pin it in. Okay. It's not a problem that it's beach right. rights instead yeah. of your property. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, everybody should be so conscientious. <laughs> okay, next we have consideration. Did you vote? Yes. Okay. Five vote. Five vote. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Consideration on Hopper and Pepper license for Michael yeah. Sutherland of Sunrun. Nobody's here. Yes, that's not Michael. Nope. Do we have, no, there's no one else on the line either. Alex, you know anything about Mr. Sutherland? <laughs> what? Oh, okay. We got overheated. Well, I just had a question where it says brief description of activity. It doesn't have anything in the location is a residential neighborhood. Do you know what he's, what's he selling? Is it considered a residential neighborhood? Sorry. So, Maybe it sounds like a residential neighborhood. No, this is solar projects. Do oh. you know what Mr. Sullivan is selling? Of Sunrun I sounds like a solar. It's solar, so I think sounds like solar. Yeah, door to door, door solar. solar. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would imagine. But um, I would prefer the description. I mean, because it is in a residential neighborhood. I mean, if he's doing a business in his house. I don't believe he needs a hawker or a He just needs a business license. Is he going to neighborhood? Uh, it, it, yeah, I, I think we should table it. doesn't this say. Without oh, is it door. zoned for this? Can we? Well, th I think this is like a door-to-door -door solicitor's permit. Yeah. That's really what this is. Yeah. Is this the right permit for that? Is there another permit for that? It's the one we have. Okay. Yeah. But, I mean, 
I'd prefer if he All right. told us what he's doing. We'll get him to fill it out. Yeah. Yeah. Check through. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Who knows? He could have solar panels on his front lawn. <laughs> so is that technically tabled? Yeah. yeah. Hold it till we get the information. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next, we have consideration on a common victual license for. Subway, Cinnabon, and Auntie Anne's located at Pilot Travel Center. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, well, well, good evening. First of all, I wanted to say thank you. I am not only a brand new Travel Center General Manager at that Pilot, I'm also new to New England. So oh, I am, I'm about, yeah, thank you. It's, it's been very welcoming. So I, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to come down here and present. Uh, you have our sincerest apologies. Uh, Ante Anne, Cinnabon, and Subway are all new concepts inside what was an old facility um, since we rehashed. Um, my guess is my conversation with our corporate is it just slipped their minds. We've already had the discussion to make sure that uh, the proper payment came to you guys. Because they were already open. Yeah. Yes. No, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, I thought. I looked You're at this and I was like, wait, I, I... Trucking along. <laughs> Yeah, but we've had other places open and then find out they need a <laughs> common victual license. Okay, any questions from the board? Any questions? Somebody want to make a motion then? I'll make a motion to grant the common victual license uh, for the premises located at 400 Haines Street. Subway, Cinnabon, and Auntie Annie's. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, five zero. Okay, Thank good you. luck. Pleasure meeting you all. Good. Yeah. How's, it been, it? how's it been going down there? Um, way better than expected. Well, that's good. Yes, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a positive. Um, uh, the good news, the really good news is, is that um, uh, we need to staff more, which is more people employed. Uh, the really even better news is, is we're actually getting there. Um, our, our original uh, uh, estimates um, were much softer than, so, than, than what's actually happening. So that's, that's, that's the good news. The, the, only, the only hard news to that is, is controlling the madness. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but other than that, we're, we're coming along. We're, we're putting our pieces together, we're settling in, and, and, uh, and we're operating. The yeah. traffic cleaned up. Clean the traffic up. Mm -hmm. You know, getting the trucks in yeah. a lot better than what was before. Uh, we okay. we are staying diligent with the new parking signs, but uh, they're still uh, occasionally parking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I run on that route. route. I run on that route. <laughs> What's that? Uh, they occasionally just oh, I know. Knock them down. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've seen I've seen a couple unfortunate things, and and when they're driving a semi and it's three o'clock in the morning and they're sliding in, and they have no place to sleep, no place to go. Um, there does come a point when they just throw in the towel and whatever's in their way gets knocked out of the way. So we're doing our best to control that. Mm. That's good. It's just going to be one of those things like cleaning a restroom. You're never going to stop. Mm. We should probably hmm? keep it. We should probably, you know, patrol it. As, and I'm, I know we do, but because yeah. it, it got better for a while and then I noticed it started to happen again. It's, you uh, know, with the it, it's, it slipped it slipped for a little bit. We yep. put up the no parking signs, it slipped for a little bit and we went and got them back up and, yep. and uh, it's, it's much more in control. Um, what I've been told, because like I said, I am still new, I haven't even passed my 90 day mark, but the historical has been told to me that probably about every four months we have to put the signs up again. So, you know, we're looking somewhere around, you know, once a quarter, we gotta, we gotta rebuild and start mm -hmm. over. And not everybody thinks no parking means them. Oh, that's very true. <laughs> <laughs> means the other person. There's no other places to eat, right? It's just Subway, Cinnabon, and Auntie Anne's. We have PJ Fresh, but that was a part of the original concept. Okay. Uh, so that's essentially, to, to, uh, to most people, it's just a deli. But it's, it's really just the name of the deli inside the facility, which functions into the operations of the actual travel center itself. The three other facilities, Auntie Anne's, Cinnabon's, and... Uh, um, uh, subway were all added to the facility. Those are brand new concepts okay. that were just introduced. So you didn't need it for the other one. It was right. already which is was, which is like, whoops. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. For all right. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure meeting you all. Me too. Hope you like New England and 
January. Wait for the winter, yeah. <laughs> I actually came up here on the 15th of March, and, uh, and, and of course, COVID was still in the oh, yeah. heat of the COVID. My first trip was to Boston. I was like, this isn't that bad. He said, <laughs> <laughs> just so, wait. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay. So yeah. was right now, honestly, it, uh, it, it, feels like, it feels like Tennessee up here. Yeah. The it's a heat wave. The trees, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, but that's what everybody keeps saying. Just yes, wait. Soak it in. <laughs> but the good thing, it changes. Yeah. You know? I like changes. I don't know if I like when they told me they said three feet can drop in three hours. I was like, I don't know if I like that. So you need, you need, need to ski. take up skiing. Yeah. We are, actually. Oh, okay. We, we noticed the ski ramps. Uh, I'm, from, I'm from Ohio, so it's, it's oh. pretty flat uh, where we're at because we're in northern Ohio, like Michigan area. Um, so we, did, we definitely had no skiing. Mm. Um, so my family's looking at taking up skiing this year and kind of giving it a shot, but what else do you do in January, right? Read. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Once, once again, pleasure meeting you all. Uh, I wanted to come down here so you could at least introduce myself in person. So thank you for having me. Good luck. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure meeting you. Thanks again, guys. Thank you. Too. Last but not least. Bring the center balls next time. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> next we have consideration on action on pool vendor contracts. Good evening, Robin. Hello. Nice to finally meet some of you in person for the first time. <laughs> um, I'm Robin. I'm the facilities coordinator. Um, so a bunch of the items tonight in order are our annual selections for vendors. Um, each year we procure uh, fuel vendor contracts for the four types of fuels that we acquired, diesel for the vehicles, unleaded gas, uh, heating oil for the boilers, and propane for a couple of our rooftop units um, and other heating sources. So this year we um, went out with CMRPC Regional Procurement. Uh, they had to do two rounds this year. The first round came in really high when everything was in a panic about a month ago. Um, so they rebid and they did a new thing this year where they accepted a base price plus per gallon. Um, the base price is based to the New York Mercantile Exchange on the day of delivery. Um, and then each vendor adds whatever their price per gallon is. So um, we've reviewed all the procurements that came in for diesel and unleaded through that procurement. And we recommend that we accept and contract with Dennis K. Burke for both sources of fuel for this coming year. Um, they were the best price and they were willing to come to Sturbridge. The other two vendors for heating oil and propane, um, nobody through the CMRPC bid was coming to Sturbridge. Um, they have a choice on their bid to select the towns. Nobody wanted to come here. Um, so we got some additional quotes of people who have been our vendors in the past. Uh, worked out that American Discount Oil came in just slightly under at 233 per gallon for oil at a fixed price for the year and propane at 158.9 per gallon for the year. Uh, so we also recommend that we contract with American Discount Oil for the heating oil and propane for this year, fiscal 22. Okay, questions, comments? Does that always happen? Did that happen last year with the CMRPC that they didn't come in with heating oil and propane? Um, so almost last year, um, one vendor came in for heating oil and it was okay. Peterson Oil. Um, and I did not want to accept them for the town building. So we procured our own after that procurement. Um, and we did have American Discount Oil. They were our vendor this year for, for heating oil. So they were we dissatisfied. Um, statewide they had an issue yeah they were under investigation um, with the Attorney General and some other things that uh, adding were a additives yeah. and oh, right. that Fine. were affecting the no I, I recall so that yeah okay I wasn't excited to bring that in. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to replace the boilers yet good looking out okay anything else from the board someone can make a motion then? I'll make the motion to accept the recommended bids for fuel products for fiscal year 2022 and authorize the chairwoman to sign the contracts. Is there a second? Oh, second. Any discussion? All in favor? G50. Okay, next we have the fire alarm contract. 
Robin. Yes, so um, last year we entered into um, what I'll consider a master contract for fire protection services with Johnson Controls Fire Protection Services. Um, at that time, we were able to enter in town hall, center office, and the library under contract. We had to wait for the fiscal year and the other contracts to end that were on the other buildings with additional vendors. So at this time, we'd like to amend that contract to add the public safety complex and the DPW so that we've centralized our um, fire protection, fire alarm, and sprinkler services under one vendor. Um, the total contract for the year was $5,506, and this amendment will add $2,653 for the year for a total of $8,159 um, this year and also next year. It's a fixed price for the next two years. Yeah, you said $8,159? Yes. Okay, any questions from the board? You do we see any savings by going to them for everything? Are they, are they giving us a better price for more business? Uh, they, they are giving us a better price. They, um, they've matched some of the other prices as well so that we can centralize. Uh, for, for my perspective, the easiest part right now is that um, up until now when there was an issue with the fire alarm, the fire department wasn't sure which vendor was at which site. Okay. Um, under this contract right now, if a fire alarm goes off and the fire department is dispatched and I'm traveling when we get to travel again or something and unavailable, they automatically know it's Johnson Controls. Um, and so that level of, of cohesiveness from building to building. We are, under, um, we are under a fixed rate, so I have all the rates for the same buildings. I'm not paying different vendors different prices for the same work as well. Okay, thank you. That makes sense, but did, did they match or did they improve? From, bun from bundling, because I know with insurance companies, if you bundle your house and your car and everything, they give you a better price. Yeah, originally they did improve. They did. Yeah, and then in three years, we'll do this again, and we'll bid everything else, yeah. and it's a three-year contract, so we'll make them compete every couple of years. Thank you. Yep. Okay, anything else from the board? Okay, someone want to make a motion then? What was the total amount? 8115 well, I can just delineate it if it makes sense. <laughs> the, motion, the motion is in the packet. Yeah, I, I move to uh, approve amendment number one with Johnson's controls for fire alarm and fire suppression services contract to include the public safety buildings in the amount of $1,633.00, the senior center in the amount of $600, and the Department of Public Works in the amount of $420.00, and authorize the chairwoman uh, to sign the amendment. Yeah, that's uh, the total 2,653 on that? Yes. Because the other would have already Gotcha. That makes sense. Okay. And I don't mind being called chairman. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want. Every town goes through this. Select person, select board. What is Chair it? Mary. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you. <laughs> okay. Is there a second to Jamie's motion? I'll second Jamie's motion. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, got nothing. Okay, next we have consideration on action of an amendment to Burgess Pest Control Contract to add animal control building in North Cemetery Building. Um, so uh, um, also this is another contract that we entered into in Fiscal 21 with Burgess Pest Management to centralize our pest control services. Uh, this was a procurement that we did competitively bid at that time. Um, we did not, for the fiscal year 21 in the budgets, carry uh, animal, uh, animal control building or the North Cemetery building for pest control services, and I'm recommending adding those services at those locations. Uh, they were in the fiscal 21, 22 budget, and they were approved at town meeting. The amendment would be for a total of $520 um, this year. Okay, any questions from the board? Okay, does somebody want to make a motion then? I'll make a motion to approve amendment number one to the pest control contract and authorize the chairman to sign the amendment. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? 
All in favor? Okay, five nothing. Okay. Next consideration on an amendment conservation outbuildings removal contract with associated building records to extend length of contract. Robin? Yes, so back in uh, February of this year, the Conservation Department and I completed a public bid for demolition, uh, removal of some outbuildings that were left at Lend Mine and Heinz Farm properties. Um, unfortunately, due to the weather and a restriction from DEP, um, the contractor was not able to mobilize before March 15th um, and then was told that they could no longer mobilize after March 15th because of the wood turtles and other species um, to protect them. So uh, at the time, the contract was a 180-day contract, which would expire in August. So at this time, we are requesting an extension of time to the end of the fiscal year 2022. Um, straight amendment of time, no cost implications at this time. Um, just so that we can start after November 15th when we're allowed to be back in that area. Any questions from the board? Okay, someone want to make a motion? I'll make the motion to approve amendment number one to the town of Sturbridge, Massachusetts contract documents for Sturbridge Conservation Department outbuilding removal project and authorize the chairman to sign the amendment. There a second? No second. Discussion? All in favor? Please. Can I just ask a quick question? It's not, I don't know, Robin might not be, yet, be able to answer it, but you know the pest management? Yes. Do they make sure when they go in and to kill all these various rodents and stuff that like no animal, well, I assume they don't do it when school is in session, obviously, but like do they make sure all the animals are out when they treat the buildings? Do we know? Yeah, we come every 30 days through um, or quarterly, depending on the building. So we, we are reviewing it um, on a regular basis. But we do, there's, there's nothing left behind. There, uh, we make sure the buildings are secure. No, I, I know. I'm just wondering, like, with the pest management, does everybody evacuate the building? Oh, they... no. It's passive. Um, oh. So we're not we're not spraying or anything like that. We have some sticky traps. We have oh okay. I thought you sprayed. In, and in some places we have some snap traps. Um, so we're doing it in a in a least invasive way possible. Oh, but they just come in with the chemicals and yeah. spray with. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Um, I, we had to spray the senior center several months ago um, on the outside of the building. They do a, a an environmentally friendly uh, spray for the ants so that the ants can't come into the food service areas. So that was the. Okay. only spraying that we've done right. should come after my house <laughs> <laughs> you never know if what they're using is worse than having that that's all yeah I don't know um, can, I, can I add to that just sure. um, so one of the things that we are also looking at and, and I was discussing with recreation earlier this year is whether or not the company that we have under contract can do some mosquito or tick spraying in selected areas. Um, so we heard that at town meeting as well as concern. So mm -hmm. we're investigating possibilities at this time. The same ticks are worse this year because mm -hmm. of, I don't know, the rain or whatever they were collecting on the leaves. Or they say that every year, but I yeah, did no, hear that this year the ticks were particularly bad. I don't know. Okay. okay. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Robin. Thank you, Robin. Nice to meet you. In person. Yes. <laughs> hey, we're up to Q. Wow. Consideration and action on appointments and reappointments for boards and committees. Who term is due to expire in 21. Now, as we normally do, I will read through the list. If you have any question about anybody, just say hold on that name and at the end we'll vote for all of them if there's no holes or answer questions on the holes. Okay, so animal control officer, roadkill agent, three-year appointment, Michelle Connors. Assistant wire inspector, three-year appointment, William Gibson. Conservation agent, three-year appointment, Rebecca Gendro. Conservation Commission, three-year term, five members. Two are up this year. Edward Goodwin, Stephen Chidester. Council on Aging, agent, aging, sorry. Three-year term, and you can have up to nine members. 
Susan Grandone, Kenneth White, Margaret Dowling, Rebecca Mimo, Ken Benson, Annette Roberts, Mary Lawless, Community Preservation Committee, three-year term, seven of nine members. Okay, Penny Dumas. Is she the only one that's up this year? No, a lot of the members are appointed by other boards. Like there's yeah, a board do. recommendation yeah. and they, they appoint their yeah. slot. Yeah, because But she was the only one that was up. Yeah, because there's three at large. Which yeah. I, I will admit that the dates for all these reappointments, there are some gaps in our information, so we're constructing the best yeah, ones that's we know how. That's happened for years. Yes, and we are, and Alex and I are determined <laughs> to straighten it out. To straighten it out. Good. Okay, Design Review Committee, three-year term, five members. Chris Kastendike, Amanda Nomenden, Richard Volpe. DPW Operations and Maintenance Manager, three-year appointment. Mark Agello, Electrical Inspector, three-year appointment. Robert Guerin, members of the Highway Department, Department of Public Works, three-year appointment. Ben Burlingame, David Lamontagne, Kimberly Wellston Pulsiver, Andrew McDermott, Historical Commission, three-year appointment. Barbara Search, Richard Volpe, Open Space Committee, three-year appointment. Carol Goodwin Chair, Lynn Sadi Peterson, Planning Board, five-year term, seven members. Charles Blanchard, Sturbridge Lakes Advisory Committee, Marsha Rigsby, Walk Pond, Heather Egan, Walk Pond, Sturbridge Tourist Association, three-year term. Thomas Chamberlain, Nicholas Salvador, Sandra Gibson Quigley, Town Council. One year term, Copeland and Page, Traffic Safety Committee, three year appointment, Earl Desert, Police Chief, Trails Committee, three year term, Brandon Goodwin, term ends June 30th, 2022, Fritz Reeve, term ends June 30th, 2024, David Peterkin, term ends June 30th, 2023, Darcy Foley, term ends June 20th, 24. Thomas Chamberlain, associate member term, expires June 30th, 2022. David Verdanis, associate member term, expires June 30th, 2024. Jeff, how come they have those expiration dates yet? We're right now, they're all expiring now. So Alex worked with Brandon to come up with various dates so the whole committee doesn't come up at, at once. At the same time, yeah. oh, okay. Sounds good. Police Department, three-year appointment, full-time offices, Sean Payne, Scott Crevier, Colby Titula, Paul Jansen, Ronald Obachowski, full-time dispatcher, three-year appointment, Patricia Lupacino, part-time dispatchers, three years appointment, three-year appointment, Matthew Cole, fire department, three-year appointment, full-time personnel, Lieutenant Matthew Roderick, Lieutenant John Marinelli, Sean Moyna, Jennifer Ash, Matthew Bono, Robert Moyna, James Town, part time personnel, three year appointment, Michael Ash. Okay, any questions? Someone want to make a motion then to approve these appointments or reappointments in some cases? I'll make a motion that we approve the appointments of um, to all these committees as set forth in agenda item 3Q appointments reappointments for 2021 beginning July 1st and ending June 30th of the year of expiration. Okay, is there second? I will second. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, five to nothing. Okay, next we have old business COVID-19 update, Jeff. Yes, um, with the recent actions by the governor and the lifting of restrictions and the cancellation of the state declaration of emergency, uh, staff is recommending that the town cancel its state of emergency. Uh, as you can see by the memo from uh, Chief Desert, who serves as our emergency management director. Um, Anyone have any question on that? 
This doesn't change your ability to use any of the emergency funding or anything like that? No. Okay. No. no. Co uh, the CARES Act funds, we have to commit the remainder of those by October and spend what we tell the state we're going to commit by the end of this year. The new funds, um, which we got $2.8 million, we have several years to spend those. Uh, and we staff is looking at how we can use those and we'll bring some recommendations to the board hopefully uh, in the next few weeks N in addition to revenue support for the budget there are some other categories that may be beneficial to the community in which to use some of those funds Good. what do we have left on the funds from before that need to be committed by october about three hundred thousand out of eight uh and really what we can't get a good grasp on is because halfway through fema said whatever was FEMA eligible, we're going to pay 75% of, and then they said, oh, we're going to pay 100% of, so we're trying to figure out where that extra 25 comes in. But everybody's looking at spending those. A big piece of that 300 will come in the fiber optic project that we, you know, we built fiber optics to all the buildings. Uh, Jeremy, the IT coordinator, needs to buy the switches to plug that fiber into. That'll consume a big share of those dollars. And then we're looking at other things like the senior center and cleaning services through the rest of the year and some other things. So, so I look forward to seeing the recommendations. I do want to just reiterate that I'd like at least something in writing about whether you looked at cleaning the air up in the ventilation systems. I know you were going to show me the senior center, but um, you know, to me, that would be great if mm -hmm. if if part of that recommendation or at least the appropriate people can look at all the buildings really to see how we can improve our ventilation systems well the cleaner air right. not only you know i mean COVID, absolutely but even cold and flu and i know that a lot of businesses are trying to this is beyond my expertise but they're looking at their ways of making sure their air is more is purified well the unfortunate thing with this building these are standalone units mm -hmm. so you can't do a centralized a process for air purification so that's why we bought the the portable unit there yeah you know. oh no i remember suggesting that yeah. yeah no that's good but i mean well i don't know if that's all we can do is listen no i understand okay any other questions or? um so does this mean that the open meeting law goes back to normal everybody for the remote we're going to talk about that today. next next okay bye <laughs> <Well, I, laughs> Your eyes move quickly. <laughs> okay, Jeff. Uh, just if we could have a motion to lift the ex the emergency. Oh, okay. Someone want to make a motion then to cancel the emergency declaration for COVID nineteen. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Discussion. All in favor? Okay, five to nothing. Our remote meeting update. Um, when I wrote this. The legislature, uh, what did I write that I measured? Yeah, okay. So the bottom line is the most recent action by the legislature allows us to do both remote meetings and in person. So it allowed the, in per the remote meeting capability of a body to continue for, I think it's at least several months after read the actual document but you can meet in person if you want so basically it allows for hybrid meetings where the the board is in the room or the members of the board who want to be in the room can be in the room and then other voting members who don't feel comfortable being in the room can be remote and then you can have the public in the room you can have the public remote so it's really up to the boards on how they operate and individual members of the boards without that legislation a majority of the board members would have to be in the room the, if the board wanted to allow remote voting, and I think you looked at this shortly before I got here, um, allowing people, the members of boards, to be remote and still vote, but there are certain provisions that have to be adopted by the boards in the absence of the most recent action of the legislature. So basically the legislature said you can be remote, you can be public, you can be hybrid for the time being. Yeah, because I'm trying to think when that first came up, but Sturbridge voted not to except that mm -hmm. you know right when you're on a board you have an obligation people understand you know right a meeting here a meeting there but you know some people
get elected to go to Florida for the winter. And, yeah. It's not fair to the board. So we never accepted that provision. I would encourage most of the boards to meet it live. Uh -huh. um, I think all the board members, I think um, the boards will meet live, but there may be one or two members of each mm -hmm. board situationally that have to be remote for whatever reason. I think that's fair and then open to the public for the meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I also feel like at this point, whatever they want, I mean, whatever they want, they don't even have to be encouraged because they may not want to share why they want to stay remote, you know, for health reasons or whatever. Oh, yeah, no, so they don't have to, they just being, have to. You know, whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. That's what I have for COVID. Okay, so anyone else have any old business? Um, Jamie? Yes, I think I do. Uh, I think this technically qualifies as old business. Of course, I did not print out my email I wrote to myself about this, so I'm looking at my phone, not because I don't want to look at it, you all, but <laughs> just because I forgot to. So this is under the, the 241 Sturbridge Road and the, I can't the address, the 250, um, I think it's 250 Charlton mm. Road, but I'm pulling up the wrong. Uh, no, excuse me, 53 Sturbridge Road and uh, 241 Sturbridge Road in Charlton. Uh, the distribution centers issue that we are basically has been confirmed as Amazon. And we are looking at a combined 6,000 trips per day on Route 20 um, being added th through Sturbridge. And when we were at the economic forum last week that I think, I think most of you were at, which was great, um, traffic was one of the central uh, problems. And what we're gonna do by having, introducing this level of uh, heavy uh, truck traffic, I presume 24 hours a day, I don't know, but what would be the point of building such large facilities, one of which is seven stories, I think, mm -hmm. um, to basically use our, uh, I presume use our access point on the turnpike, I um, believe will also have the added effect of backing up Route 20 well into Brimfield, maybe even a Palmer, blocking, uh, sh shutting down Route 84 more, uh, uh, e creating even more traffic as we're opening up. All of this occurred, I think, with traffic studies utilizing COVID rates. So it's bad for the region. We are going to end up with all the burden of it. And I think the MEPA comment period ends July 9th. So I think what I would urge the board to do at this point is I think we need to find uh, uh, authorized legal assistance. I think we need to get a lawyer. I don't think KP Live will actually be able to do it because I think they represent Charlton. Charlton. Yeah, so they'll be conflicted out. So that's the, the next part. But I think the community, and I, don't, I have heard pretty much down the line from everybody that I've talked to about this issue that they are concerned about it. And it doesn't matter if you're in Fisk Hill, Walker Pond, if you're uh, up uh, Hall, down Holland Road, up Brimfield Road, all of it. They're all, um, this, this is frankly even beyond just a traffic issue, it's dangerous. I mean, this is, uh, uh, and will have a chilling at best impact at, on our economy. So um, I think the board needs to be pretty. Um, aggressive about it, particularly with the common period ending. I know Ann Gobi and Todd Smola have both been, um, had a very much an open uh, dialogue with us on it, but I think with their, you know, waiting to see where it goes. So this MEPA is this new round, then I assume it's gonna go to MassDOT, and I think that if we don't have all of our information and have all of our ducks in the row right now, we could create real issues. And maybe I'm being uh, chicken little on it, but better to proceed as if that is the case because we don't want to end up with something that, um, right as we're really getting ready, I believe, as a board to really put some work in on Route 20 to be over before it starts in terms of the impact on our local economy. So that's my diatribe. I think it's technically old <laughs> business. <It is. laughs> yes, I think procedurally I'm fine. <laughs> But oh, we, we forgive. <laughs> oh, well, can we, call, can we yes. comment on that? I just want to say I, I fully support uh, Jamie Select Person Goodwin on this. <laughs> um, and I don't, uh, and I agree. I mean, KPR is definitely out. And I'm wondering do, uh, you know, you're going to entertain some kind, because I do want legal advice on it as well. So are you prepared to do some kind of a motion? Do we have a recommendation 
who has expertise in this area because residents are very concerned with the amount of tra traffic and with no exit in Charlton off the pike I just see it as one big safety problem for Sturbridge I mean I remember when um, one of the recreational cannabis how places that they wanted was originally on 20 off of 84 before they decided on the site by friendlies and chief four the then chief Ford at the time didn't recommend it at all because he said it's a safety problem route 20 is dangerous and he didn't even want an additional cannabis um, facility there and now we're going to have just over the line 6,000 trucks a day so I mean I just I just see this as a big problem for Sturbridge. Okay, anyone else? I agree. Ian? I think the traffic is concerning, yeah. Oh, it's very concerning. I have um, a question. I, I agree with the legal representation. Would you also like some traffic analysis? The 2022 budget includes some money in the town administrator's budget for special projects that we may be able to get some, some basic traffic analysis to well, help that would, bolster yeah. the case that so we can do that too helpful. okay we have a traffic engineer that works a lot with the planning board that may be somewhat familiar with the project and the route already that may be able to uh, provide some comment that can beef up whatever we can find an attorney okay do you want a motion then to both effects yeah, to find an attorney and okay. authorize you know yeah I mean okay. just on a couple of quick notes if I can now so I think it's going to be hard with the municipal of groups because I think a lot of them are going to feel on a lot of the traditional municipal attorneys. I don't, you know, Amazon is pretty, it's, it has a lot of buying and it is awkward for them. So I think that's one consideration. And the other part is whoever probably was counsel would want whatever the trap, just make sure we coordinate what we're doing. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. a left hand and the right hand. Absolutely. That's only, but I would, I guess so we're moving to um, find, um, Track to, I mean, the do we want to name the firm now, or do we want to try to figure that out, or are we just going to keep oh, it broad? No, we could figure that out later. Okay, so I, I would move to uh, obtain uh, representation uh, uh, to analyze and advise the town of Sturbridge in connection to the, yeah, let me get the actual, the uh, developments in Charlton, at 241 Sturbridge Road and at 53 Sturbridge Road um, as, uh, as soon as possible because the initial MEPA comments are due July 9th. I'll second that. In Any discussion? Question. Just for clarification, does that include authorization to spend some money out of the town administrator's special projects fund for traffic engineering? Yeah, I, I was going to do that as a separate motion, oh, but okay. um, that's fine. Thank yeah, you. I just figured it makes okay. sense to. Uh, Six one Hamptons. <laughs> okay, all in favor of that motion? Okay, five nothing. So your second motion. Uh, I would hereby move that the town, uh, the board of selectmen, authorize the town administrator to uh, utilize his special project funds to um, and, uh, engage in a traffic study. Or get some traffic engineering. Or get a traffic yeah. engineer, yeah. Okay, is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Okay. Okay, Mary, do you have any old business? Um, no, I, well, I already raised it, but we talked about it. I, I want um, some ideas from what, what are we going to do with OSB, because now we're already up to June, and we're halfway through. But it would be nice and I, if we did something in conjunction with them to commemorate it. And so maybe even if, I know you've been working, I guess Terry's been working with Chris Thierry, but even if we had some ideas of the progress, what kind of meetings they're having, what ideas are being you know, considered, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Because at this point, I think we'll have to do something in the fall. Yeah, I think and that's maybe. when they're planning a lot. Mm -hmm. It's kind of their big time of year anyway, right? I mean, yeah. We're working on their clock. Yeah. So I get it. So I imagine they're a little delayed because, you know, the first half of the year was probably pretty fairly screwed up for them too. Well, I think they're trying to get their footing. Yeah. And trying to understand what their season looks like, 
Uh, the governor's lifting of the restrictions was sooner than most anticipated, mm -hmm. so everybody's trying to kind of figure yeah, out where they are. Um, but they have also been working with the Sturbridge Tourist Association on different elements of their yearly marketing and per, uh, event schedule. So um, nice. I mean, I don't know, like a parade or something. Yeah. Understood. Right. Let them organize it. Oh, I get it. But, oh, oh. but we do have a that tourist was, coordinator now. So. Oh, yeah, but do you remember the 250th parade, the organization that took? Oh, I, I, do, I oh. agree. But that, that, what I'm saying is, and we are happy. Before I'm, your time, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, it was probably a lot. <laughs> Crawling around. I, I don't know, yeah. yeah. That was my only old business. OK, Chase, old business? Uh, old business, I wanted to just give an update. Uh, me and the town administrator had a meeting at Burgess with Kathy Pelly and Paul Guerin about the fields and uh, what we can do to approve. And then we got a lot of irons in the fire here about moving forward and getting them some help. So I just wanted to give the public a little update that we are working on cleaning up our fields. At Burgess? At Burgess, yep. That storm damage that took out the the bench and dug out on that one side. Yeah. Yep. I don't see why Ian can't go over it. Just climb over the fence to a little bit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Minimum wage, Ian. Yeah. 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 It's better than this. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Thanks, Chase. Ian, any old business? I have no old. No. No, and I have no old. New business. Kino monitor installation at Fred's Variety. Uh, we got this letter. Uh, I'm still trying to get some more information on it, but the 21 day time frame starts on June 15th. I did get clarification of that. Um, so this is just for your information this evening. I imagine if you do want to have a letter, you can do it at your June 6th meeting um, if there's any concern. It's just you can watch the Kino game in the building. They're already authorized to sell Kino. Right. So it's just watching the yeah, game. Because that authorization comes from the state. Yeah. We didn't have any say. Did we already do all, we did all our old business? Yeah. Okay, can I just ask one thing? I, <laughs> yeah. um, maybe we can, I just, I, and I can email Nelson myself too, but out of curiosity, it seems that, that is it the, an extra mart? I don't know if it's the extra mart, what, uh, they're calling it Lucky Mart, mm -hmm. it's the former extra mart. It se that seems to be at a standstill. Yes. And I just wondered what the, what the problem was. They started it without permits. <laughs> and then when they got into it, uh, bad soil, other issues. So they're working through conservation. They're working through their permit process now. Okay. It's been like that for a long time. I, I knew about yeah. the permits, yeah. but oh. I didn't know if they made any more progress. But, yeah. but they have all those extra signs up. I just had one comment on the Kino monitor. I'm in and out of a lot of stores on a daily basis, and I will say that if we're going to do this, it should be noted and reminded of them that they are an off-premise alcohol location. Because you do see a lot of people hanging around in the stores when you include these monitors and watching the play, and you can buy alcohol in these locations. So yeah, I'm not going to say that people are standing around drinking in other locations, yeah, but, but it does we happen. Could, we could pull their license. I, I just think it's worth reminding them when they get the screen that, hey, you are an yeah. off-premise account. Don't put any chairs out. Yes, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Is that happening in the city? In like I will not comment on a fast call. I just say that I think it'd be worth you know just letting them know, hey, your permit still stands the same, and that's right. Bear in mind. Yep. That's a very good point. It hasn't changed. Okay, so approval of. Oh no, we have new business. The packet just gave us mm -hmm. earlier. Some additions came in. First one is um, Russ Chamberlain's retirement from the planning board. Um, tomorrow night's his last meeting, and there will be a recognition event after the meeting, and the board is certainly invited to attend. And their meetings go pretty Yeah, quickly. according to Gene, that meeting won't last more than an hour. Right. It'll be probably their longest. They've had some 10-minute meetings, some <laughs> So. Maybe we got to get the chair over. <laughs> I know. He's lazy. That's what it is, I think. <laughs> okay, and Steve Haltman is retiring from the Conservation Commission effective July 21st, 2021. Mm -hmm. We have his letter of resignation. Um, also, Officer Jeff Lavallee is uh, 
retiring from the Sturbridge Police Department effective July 1st, 2021, but he has requested to possibly come back as a part-time officer. And Jeff, you said you and the chief would be discussing Yeah, the chief that. would like to discuss that with you on July 19th when he's available to discuss. He won't be available on the 6th. Okay. And then um, additional help for the building department. We would like to have William LePage be available to help Nelson Burlingame or the department over the next several weeks. Mr. LePage is a certified inspector. He most recently worked for the town of Dudley. We will be processing the application and he will be an employee for the purposes of liability and workers' compensation insurance, but he would be used on an as-needed basis. Okay, and the purchase of Fiskill Road. Can, can I, and I don't mean to interrupt. No, that's okay. On that one, can I get a motion to authorize or confirm the appointment of Mr. LePage on an ad needed basis for the building department? Um, this came up today. Uh, Mr. Berlin Game is still in and out of the office for various reasons, uh, but he's saying this gentleman will be in a position to help him. Is there a motion then? Can I guess a question? Just so in his appointment, in, is he a contractor in Dudley now? What is he, what's his He background? retired. He's moving to Florida in a month or so, but he is available for the time being to, to assist our department. Okay, makes sense. And he's saying he's doing it for free, but I would ask that you authorize up to the same amount that uh, Mr. White was making uh, in the event there is compensation requested. Okay. Do we have a motion then? So moved. That's good. Okay. All you have to do is fill in the words. That's it. Alex has <laughs> it down. <laughs> have they Alex, been, I know Alex. there was a problem with the backlog of permits. Have they been yes, able to been, dwindle that down? And it's, we're caught up. Yeah. So yes. between Mr. White and uh, the state inspector, they, they caught up on all that. Okay. Is there and how many hours will he be volunteering and or working? As it depends on Mr. Burlingame's need. Okay. So there's no range? No. Okay. No. Okay, is there a second to the motion? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, five zero. Okay, purchase of Fisk Hill Road and Old Farm Road. Jeff? Yes, uh, we've been processing the results of the town meeting. The town meeting said that we would like to buy the property and we put KP Law in connection with the seller's attorney and they are working on the documents. The question our attorney has is, do we need to do any investigations on the property before, uh, before we take possession? That's a question. We also uh, need the board, and I apologize for this coming out today. This is when this happened late last week when I got the documents. Um, but the board needs to adopt the notice of intent to exercise the option pursuant to GL chapter 61, section eight, and the purchase and sale agreement, which is, uh, identical to the purchase and sale agreement the seller had with the private buyer and those are necessary to be filed and then we can uh, proceed with the closing uh, of the property okay. Okay, uh, questions someone want to make that long motion there i will make the long motion there um I hereby move that pursuant to the authority granted by the vote taken under Article 49 of the June 7, 2021 annual town meeting to exercise the town's right of first refusal and purchase for consideration of, of $155,000 and for recreational purposes, the uh, property is located at 48 Old Farm Road, 133 Fisk Hill Road, 137 Fisk Hill Road, and 139 Fisk Hill Road. Uh, which are classified under GLC 61 and to execute and to authorize the chair of the board of selectmen to execute on behalf of the board the notice of exercise the purchase and sale agreement and any and all acceptances affidavits and other documents necessary or appropriate to accomplish the foregoing is there a second I'll second Jamie's <laughs> <laughs> any discussion all in favor did we vote to accept the resignations of the? I can have those next time. I just wanted you to have them. Have them. It was oh, okay. Yeah. You can. You can if you want. Oh, okay. Oh, so we're not expect, accepting Steve Haltman effective July twenty first, or that's for next. It can. It can be, or you. Okay. Can receive. I. I just didn't know. Yeah. 
Also, that retirement's coming up before we have another meeting for the police department July 1st. So should we do that before? Or maybe? Sure. Yeah, because we had already accepted Russell's from before. We right. We Not Steve. No, but we get the meeting on the... Oh, I don't care either no. way. I just... Uh, Mr. Lavalley should be, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not... It's an act, but... It's a... Okay, somebody want to make a motion then to approve the retirement of officer jeff lavalley from the sturbridge police department and thank him for his many years of service so moved okay is there a second second discussion all in favor wish him well he's watching D getting back to fisk hill um we're not seeking special investigations on the property i don't see any reason to it's just spending more money we know right. it's there Plus, there was nothing really I don't know it very well so yeah, yeah there that, uh, you know there wasn't a factory or a yeah. truck stop or a tannery maybe tannery. no tannery <laughs> no <laughs> there was a gun shop close by but lead We're gone for lead, lead. Yeah, pistol pond do you know what okay. pistol pond that's, is that's a pistol pond nope so they just shot in 20 it's where um what's that motel comfort in it's pistol pond Okay. It was a Gibbs and Tiffany gun factory there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Before my time, but it was there. This, Robin has a question in the back. Robin? Did any of the building lots have previous residential buildings that may have been demolished? Nope. Oh. No. Nope. So no it's oil been, tanks or anything? So. It's been trees and that's what? Trees and ledge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And on top of that. We are not in Sturbridge. Okay, All right. so. Ledge, Good. Ledge, Thank you. Okay, correspondence, Chase. Yes. All right, May 11th, 2021, Southbridge Landfill BWPSW 45 permit approval. Documents from James A. McQuaid, Section Chief, Solid Waste Management Program, Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, to Jeff Bridges and Mary Blanchard. May 14th, 2021, Charter Communications, Upcoming Changes. Letter from John Maher, Director of Government to Jeff Bridges. May 21st, 2021, Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission advisory regarding the end of COVID related restrictions. Email from Ryan Melville, Deputy Executive Director, Massachusetts Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission to Jeff Bridges. May 25th, 2021, KP Law PC e update, current issue regarding alcohol licensing. Email and e update from KP Law to Jeff Bridges. June 1st, 2021, The Dirt, News from the Garden, newsletter from Community Food Collaborative to Jeff Bridges. June 7th, 2021, Charter Communications, Upcoming Changes. Letter from John Mahar, Director of Governmental Affairs to Jeff Bridges. June 14th, 2021, Charter Communications, Broadband Expansion. Letter from John Mahar, Director of Government Affairs to Jeff Bridges. June 16th, 2021, Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission Advisory regarding the expansion of patio service and takeaway delivery of alcohol by on-premises licensees. Advisory from Ryan Melville, Deputy Executive Director of the Massachusetts ABCC to Jeff Bridges. Okay, now that one is dated after the one from KP Law. Um, and it changed a little. It's been changing, yeah. yeah. Constant. Um, we will, I assume, get from planning a list of the restaurants that will be. Yes. Because we do have to approve them. Okay. Okay, does anyone else have any correspondence? I just had a question about about the outdoor patio dining. Is it possible for us to make one motion and allow the restaurants in town to, to operate outdoor dining without everybody having to apply for a permit like that individually? Could we? Well, they don't really apply, apply. The, it's just letting us know. Well, planning sure. talks to them because there's certain things Tents they and, have to check. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. And then, like last year, we just got a whole list of what they what restaurants there were yeah, I remember the and any the guidelines that had to be given. Okay. I'm just thinking make it easy on them as possible. But. Yeah, but you can't just give cut blanche no. or people just 
Here we go. Set up with, <laughs> with no tents, with no, no railings. No protection from traffic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sell the drinks to people yeah. walking by. <laughs> Your BTs expand to the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> okay, approval of minutes. May 17th. A long time ago. Does anybody have any corrections, additions? I have just one word, a change. On page 329, uh, midway through the second paragraph vice chair dowling asked based on the policy what percentage of the budget is given um alex cross out given and put free cash and that's the only change i have okay anyone else okay motion to approve is amended so moved second Second. Discussion, all in favor? Okay, minutes of June 7th. Any addition? There's only 10 minutes. Okay. Motion to approve is written then. So moved. Is there a second? A second. Discussion, all in favor? Okay, citizens forum. No one's here. No one's here. Not called in. Okay, next on the agenda we have a request for executive session. Chase, you want to read it? Yep. Executive Please. Yep, executive session to enter executive session under MGL C 30A, section 21, paragraph 1, to discuss the reputation, character, physical condition, or mental health rather than professional com competencies of an individual or discuss the discipline or dismissal of or complaints or charges against a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual. Okay, is there a second? I'll second Chase the motion. How do you vote, Jamie? In favor. Ian, how do you vote? Yes. Chase, how do you vote? Yes. And I vote yes. And I vote yes. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries. I down. <laughs> and you will not be rejoining the regular And we will not be reconvening in open session. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we're going to end the meeting, uh, the remote meeting, and turn off the recordings.